Hey everyone, I got a lot of questions about the automated rail crossing video that I uploaded last week. So in this video I'm gonna explain on a functional level how the thing works. Please note that I'm using the old 9 volt system since I don't like replacing batteries. My trains are powered from the rails and that means that also the control of a train is a bit different than when you're using battery powered trains. I will however also describe the functionality of those trains. So let's start with the basic components. We have a printed circuit board on which sits the main controller, this is an Arduino chip. This circuit board is a dedicated design by myself and has the possibility to control two crossings. Connected to this PCB are a sensor, the isolated track segment and the signal. I make a train stop by disabling the power on the isolated track segment just before the crossing. As you can see here, I've removed a bit of metal so it's not in connection with the rest of the permanent powered rails. This segment is controlled by the controller using a special chip. This is an L293 motor driver chip. What it basically does is converting the low power signals from the controller to an amplified signal that can drive a motor, in this case the isolated track segment, which is connected to the train motor. In this video I'm gonna first focus on single crossing and then on a double crossing. Here's the basic layout of a single crossing. We have a sensor on the priority track and an isolated segment with signal on the non-priority track. A train doesn't stop on the priority track, the sensor only reads if a train is present and in that case the non-priority track is disabled. At startup the isolated track segment is powered so a train on the non-priority track runs just normally over the crossing. The sensor on the priority track is connected to a digital input of the Arduino chip. When the sensor is activated by a train, it generates a so-called interrupt inside the controller, which makes the controller process a special part of the code, a so-called interrupt service routine. This code does two things, put the signal to red and it disables the isolated track segment in the non-priority track. Since the track is disabled, a train on the non-priority track will stop by itself on the isolated track segment, since it doesn't get any power from the rails. When the train on the priority track has cleared the sensor, the signal is put to green and the isolated track segment is enabled again. But there's a problem. Since the sensor on the priority track is half a meter before the crossing, it means that the tail of the train can still be on the crossing on the moment when the sensor is cleared. If the non-priority track is enabled at this point, it could result in a crash. And that's why I've added a starting delay. This delay is shown in seconds in the first two numbers on the display. I've made this delay adjustable to make the system more flexible, since heavier and slower trains need more time to clear the crossing than faster trains. I can adjust the delay by changing the value of an adjustable resistor. So when the sensor is no longer activated, the system waits at the amount of seconds of the delay before it enables the non-priority track. The enabling of the track uses pulse width modulation to make the train start nice and smoothly. This also makes the beeping sound when the train started. The coils inside the motor resonate on the pulse width modulation frequency. If you want to have the same crossing functionality for your battery power train, you need to add some stuff to the system. Instead of disabling the train track, you need to send a signal to the train that needs to stop. But you also need to know if the train is close to the crossing, otherwise you will stop a train for no reason on another part of the track. So you need to add another sensor on the non-priority track that scans if a train is near the crossing. But what if you have multiple battery powered trains running on the same track? The first problem is that you don't know which train is nearing the crossing. And you need to know that since you need to send a stop signal to that particular train. This can be done by adding an RFID attack to the train and an RFID reader along the non-priority track. This way you can identify the train by reading the RFID attack when the train activates the sensor. Now you know to which train you have to send the stop signal. This is of course only needed when the sensor of the priority track is activated and there's a train on the crossing. As you can see, you need a lot more stuff to make it work with battery powered trains. And that's one more excuse for me to use the 9 volt system. I've made the printed circuit board more flexible by adding another control possibility to it. Call it another channel if you will. This way I can control two single crossings or one double crossing with the same PCB. And that's what I did in the real crossing video. I used two sensors, since there were two priority tracks. 
and there were also two non-priority tracks with isolated segments. It was just a matter of updating the software and it was ready to go. In this case if one or both of the sensors was activated by a train, both non-priority tracks were disabled. Well this is about it what I can tell you about the automated rail crossing. I hope you learned something from it and if you have any questions please do ask. Links to the Arduino program and the schematic of the PCB are for download available in the description of the video. Thanks for watching, bye!